Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ethereal Pumpkin Plain. We've been up here for hours, nay years, searching for one pumpkin out of all these stems. Just kidding, we're on top of Total Chaos, of course. Um, so we're placing down some jack-o'-lanterns here at Total Chaos today, hoping to get this project done today and possibly play it in the very near future. Um, but we're placing these down so we can wire up all these dispensers on top because we had a whole lot of dripstone that we're going to drop on players' heads as well as arrows and potions that are coming in from the side. And yeah, we basically need to make a whole lot of potions today, fill those in the dispensers. We gotta continue to fill in more arrows into these dispensers here and here. And yeah, we also gotta craft up uh, a whole bunch of fireworks today as well. So first things first, we gotta make sure we have all of our redstone go into all these dispensers, which we've now done. So you can see all these repeaters and redstone dust. They're going to power these dispensers. Now to test this, we have in here a single stone button. And so this single stone button should test basically the whole system um, all the way from the first dispenser to the last dispenser. Because if the signal makes it all the way down here from where we start the thing, then yeah, we know that this thing should uh, work everywhere because all these bits are exactly the same. Um, so... Yeah, it'll test to make sure that the signal reaches here and that the dispensers activate. So we'll make our way down this skinny, narrow uh, line here of redstone and scoot on in here. Go down this tunnel. We gotta actually jump off here. Should probably make a little thing here for the future in case we have to go up there. Uh, and then we can get rid of this. Yes, okay. And then we should probably get some of these other jack-o'-lanterns that we've destroyed jumping up here. Okay, so basically this is the master button. Uh, so this block will be <laughs> there by default. Uh, we'll let that despawn, I guess. Um, and so whenever I hit this button, this will unlock the clock. Right now I've actually disabled the clock. Usually there's a torch here that runs everything. Um, but... I've disabled it for now, just in case, um, but when we press this, this should unpower the block here, which will then start the clock, uh, start the timer, and then it should also uh, activate the dispensers up there, uh, independently, I should say. So if we hit this, bam, clock starts to tick, and also we should see that the stone button up here has been shot out of the dispenser. So let's just get up here and see if that's the case. Okay, so if we get up here and we come to the very end over here, that is not the case. Okay, so <laughs> we messed up somewhere. This is exactly why we test these things because occasionally you may miscount or the redstone signal doesn't go as far as you thought it would or something else might have happened. So Let's retrace our steps here. Somehow the signal did not reach the dispenser. So it turns out that we didn't make a mistake in counting our redstone. Instead, the dispenser just simply wasn't updating for whatever reason. After the jack-o'-lantern above it was being powered, it just would not fire. So we used instead a powered rail because powered rails can actually update adjacent blocks. So it seems like the powered rails fixed it. Not quite sure why the redstone didn't work, but that's Minecraft for you. Anyways, I uh, also want to mention that Hypno was kind enough to bring out some arrows to us. We now have 27 shulker boxes of arrows down here, which can help us to fill in our dispensers even further. So, big thank you to Hypno, uh, who brought all these over. Much appreciated. And we also now need to start thinking about crafting up some fireworks. So, we need to do this before we actually put down the powdered snow. So, now is as good a time as any to do this. So the fireworks are going to be shot out of these bottom dispensers here. You can see we got some in there already. And what I'm thinking about is this. So the fireworks have different durations. Uh, one, two, and three. I think we want all three of these in the dispensers. Uh, but we also want to vary the amount of breaks that a firework has. Because that basically varies the damage it does. So if you get hit by a firework with, let's say, like six fireworks, like... Uh, firework stars in it, like let's say this one, like let's say we put in six firework stars, a gunpowder, and a paper. This is going to do a lot more damage than say one with only one break, because there's so many more explosions that are happening. Um, so that's kind of a unique property. I can just show this to you if I get on down 
below here like this uh, and yeah we come over here uh, I have a flight duration two three break flight duration two two break and a flight duration two one break and if I explode these on myself here you'll see the two break did two hearts of damage oh, that was the three break I'm sorry three break did two hearts the two break we do that that did a heart and a half right there and then the one break at the end that also did a heart and a half, but it varies. I'll just show you, like, if I do this one. Yeah, that one only did one, for instance, so... Yeah, based on the number of breaks, yeah, you can have uh, more or less damage done. Uh, and so, to that end, I think what we'll do is we'll have, you know, a couple of these with, you know, flight duration 3, a couple with flight duration 1, and a couple with flight duration 2, uh, and then also the various breaks that accompany that, so... Uh, basically, let's see, we're missing the flight duration one with this here, and then we're missing the two and one here, so, no, the one and two here. One, two, bang, like this. So, basically, we want the, all the fireworks to, I think, look like this, where we have, we get this out of here, flight duration three. Three breaks, flight duration three, two breaks, flight duration three, one break, and then the same for the flight duration twos, three, two, one, and then the same for the ones, which is three, two, one. So something like this with varying flight duration and uh, the number of breaks, for, so it varies the damage a little bit. So that's the general plan for fireworks, and we also want to have variation in other aspects of the fireworks. So instead of just having, you know, all these small balls and all of them being blue, we want to have, you know, maybe some burst fireworks, some star-shaped fireworks, uh, some of the large balls perhaps would be good, as well as definitely have different colors, because yeah, having them all the same blue color, that would just be kind of boring, and it would be more chaotic if they were all sorts of different colors that we could have exploding in this arena. Uh, so to that end, I think what we need to do is we need to set up a flower farm, like a too tall flower farm, um, with some peonies, with some rose bushes, with some sunflowers, and with the lilacs. So we're going to do that right now. So first things first, we got to head back to our base, see if we have any lilacs or peonies or rose bushes or sunflowers. Hopefully we got all of them, but I'm not exactly sure if we do or not. So if we float on in here, let's see this one. We got sunflower, good, and rosebush, good, but no lilac or peony, it seems. Oh yeah, we also have the ability to make green with cactus, because we got plenty of cactus over there. It looks like we actually have to empty that chest over there. Um, so I guess, we can check in here too. No, no, okay, so we have no lilac and peony, so we gotta go find some. Let's grab some bone meal from here. Just grab all this, I guess. Right there. How much cactus do we have? Oh, wow. Lots and lots of cactus. Okay. So let's quickly <laughs> toss some of this to be bone mealified. There's one coming down. Like so. Toss all this in to get bone mealified. Don't need this much cactus. Don't need it overflowing here. There we go. There we go. Alright, and let's make sure, yeah, I'm afraid this might be happening. Getting overflowed. There we go. That should give us some more bone meal. Alright, let's boost out of here. Boost out of here. Certainly somebody has placed down, oh, I see some. Some lilac or peony. So we can just swoop on over here. Get out our bone meal. Kabam. Kabam. There's our peony. There's our lilac. And we're good to go. Let's make ourselves a too high flower farm. You know, I was thinking about putting the flower farm in my base here, but it's already pretty much filled out and we're out of space. You know, we got pretty much every corner of this place covered with either some farms or some like utility areas like this down here with the smelters and stuff uh, and all the, the workstations. So we're kind of out of space here for this flower farm, but then I thought and remembered that we actually have another portion of the basement which is unutilized right now. If we walk up the steps here, turn to the right, down here, this portion of the basement is unused. 
Now we don't have too much space, right? It's not that like wide here and the cactus farm is like literally on the other side of this wall. But since we got the space, we might as well use it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And you can see from here, we now have the flower farm complete. And it has a very similar design and aesthetic to what we have in our base. And I was actually able to use the back side of the cactus farm right here. These amethyst blocks are actually the back side of the cactus farm uh, to sort of complete this look here, which I think looks really nice. Uh, really simple, really straightforward, but yeah, it functions quite well. Uh, the way it works is basically you flick these levers and your items come on down right here. Um, so if I turn this on, you can see, bam, there's our sunflowers right there. And yeah, we get more just by turning it on and off. Uh, and then we can look in the chest and you see the sunflowers get collected there. Uh, they actually go through farmland here because you can actually plant uh, flowers on farmland, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, yeah, same for the other ones, except we don't have bone meal in there, but we're going to fix that right now. The way we do that is actually we have a button here, and that opens a side secret door. So, that's pretty cool. You can just walk on through here, and then back here, this is where we actually load the thing. Uh, which is, yeah, where the basement, uh, was before. So, we got a bunch of bone blocks here, which I'm going to turn into bone meal. We can put this right in here like so. So with the bone meal now in the barrels, we can just leave this to filter down into the dispensers and grab our shulker box full of bones, head on back. Got a pressure plate here that opens the door for us and we're ready to use the farm now. So all we gotta do, turn on these levers and the flowers start flowing. That's pretty much it. There we go, and all the flowers make their way down into here or almost all the flowers, some of them do get caught like on the the front side of this, but I'm not really too worried about it. We could put like a like a trap door up like that. That would keep all the flowers, most of the flowers I should say, in the, the area, but I think it looks better to have the greenery out front. Uh, and that probably got sucked in here maybe. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, then we just turn them off to shut it down. And that's basically it. Uh, and the reason this works is because there's a, yeah, a bunch of uh, farmland here, which is not a full block, so there's a hopper directly under here which catches all the items and filters them down into the chest area. Um, so let's go ahead and put all this stuff away, but that will get us all the flowers that we need and all the mostly all the colors that we need for the firework uh, display. Uh, speaking of displays, we actually have another option now besides just farmland for this area here. Uh, we actually are on 119, as Joe <laughs> uh, says, happy 119 to Tango. Um, but yeah, we are now in Minecraft 119, as you can see. If I open up my F3 menu, yep, Minecraft 119, which means we got access to some new blocks. Rejoice indeed, Tango. Rejoice indeed. So since we're in 119, we can, of course, come on over here with some mud, and we can place down some dirt like this, and we also have some water bottles in here ready to go. Um, which we can now use to make some new blocks. So we can actually right click with the water bottle and that gets us some mud blocks, which I think look really cool actually. They look super unique. And they're also uh, not a full block. They're actually a little bit less than a full block. So we could actually use these in place of farmland over at the flower farm if we wanted to. That's another option we have now. Um, so that's really cool. And of course you just fill up the glass bottles again here and just get the last couple of mud blocks there we go and then we can just simply mine these up with a shovel just like so and we can make packed mud with some wheat so we can just bada bing bada boom bam there we go there's some packed mud and curiously enough packed mud is not mined with a shovel so you can see it takes forever uh, instead you use uh, a pickaxe like that <laughs> so yeah packed mud and then you can make mud bricks and stuff I don't think I have that much wheat though May have to go. Let's quickly run to Ren's, uh, Ren's front of his gigapie shop. Or actually, you know what? Green has a little thing here, so we can use this as long as we replant, of course. Um, so let's just nab this, replant these. There we go. There's the mud brick stair, and of course the slab and the blocks as well. These blocks are going to be awesome for building and for 
yeah, making some nice, like, uh, natural builds, I think. So, very excited to have these here. Although, these blocks, the mud blocks, are kind of like the easier blocks to get compared to some of the other blocks, namely the frog lights. Now, some of you might recall way back in Minecraft 1.18, you know, back when the earth cooled. <laughs> uh, no, but back in the early days of the server, uh, we actually met with Corrales uh, in a bastion, a treasure bastion, which has a magma cube spawner. And he told us that he would give us the magma cube spawner in that bastion in exchange for me making a frog light farm once the 119 came out. So today I'm excited to announce we are making good on that promise of making a frog light farm in the bastion. Uh, we have to, of course, cut Corrales and, and XB in on the profits. But we have a whole bunch of powdered snow in here, which I've been gathering throughout the season for both Total Chaos and for the Frog Light Farm. So we're going to take this powdered snow and utilize it to make a Frog Light Farm right now. We are now at the portal in the nether, and we have to see if the way to the bastion is still up or not. So it might be kind of a rough uh, traversal here to get there, but I think this way is still available? We'll see. <laughs> uh, okay, there is still a map onward to the desert. I think this is it. I think we just go straight from here, but then turn right at some point. Um, so let's fly down this way and see. And yeah, I think we take this path to the right here. <laughs> Trying to remember which way to go. I think it's this way, and then down, and then over to the left. But hopefully this pathway is still intact, because th like I said, this was quite a while ago. I think somewhere we turned and went, like, into the wall here? Yeah, down here. Yeah, into this path. Uh, Hermitcraft TGC area? I think this is the right pathway here. Let's see. It's going to be kind of challenging to get frogs down this pathway. But I think once you get down here a ways... Nope, that's not it. It sort of like opens up a little bit. And I think I put a torch down here. We'll see if it's still there. I remember it being in... In the, uh, what do you call it? The warp forest, I think. Or at least this was just before it. Is this it? I think this is it. Yeah, I remember this. Yep, I put this piglin head down, and down here is the bastion, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's still here. There's the magma cube spawner. All right. This is it. So this is a bastion which Corrales and XP took over, and then gifted to me to take care of. Um, so you can see the magma cube spawner right down here. We already, uh, have put down cobblestone everywhere here, uh, so that when magma cubes do spawn, uh, it, they're not really that much of a threat. Also, all the piglins and the brutes have been cleared. I think, yeah, all the piglins are gone now, it seems. But this should still be spawning some magma cubes. I think there might still be, yeah, there's still lava under here too. So we got to be a little bit careful of this, but I think... Yeah, there we go. Make sure it's still spawning magma cubes. I think this will be the location where we build our farm. So I'm glad we were able to find it. Kind of a long journey through the nether, but uh, I think we can develop this into something quite useful. So in order to build this magma cube spawner, we're going to need to obviously disable the magma cube spawner temporarily. Because we got to, you know, drain the lava underneath here build up the sides, build up the mechanics, and we don't want a bunch of magma cubes spawning. Uh, luckily, there's a pretty easy way to do that. If I can actually get on top of this, which is easier said than done, this is obviously why we need to disable this, because otherwise you get overrun by magma cubes, and it gets pretty ugly pretty quickly if you're not careful with these big magma cubes especially. So let me just get these guys down to a reasonable level. And hopefully, we can make our way up here. And so we just do every two blocks like this. Actually, I think we can make a grid like this. Probably be easier. But basically, magma cubes require one, two, here. They require um, the size of a, ma a full magma cube to spawn. 
So it's actually pretty easy to disable their spawning, and it is now actually disabled. So there you go. Uh, light doesn't re doesn't uh, affect the magma cubes and magma cube spawners. We can actually get rid of all of this, and this, and this, and this, and this. So you actually need very few blocks to disable this whole spawner. But there we go. This is now actually disabled. We can get this done, and this. Nice. All right. So now no new magma cubes can spawn. Obviously now we just got to get rid of these tiny ones. So now this whole area is perfectly safe for magma cube spawnings because basically no big spawn uh, slimes can spawn because they need a four block uh, clear area to be able to spawn. So if I were to get rid of one of these then they could but in this configuration they actually cannot spawn. So. Yeah, very good trick to know if you don't know about that already, but now we can actually build this farm up. With the spawner disabled, we went ahead and also got rid of a lot of the lava underneath of here. Uh, so the lava is only too deep in this uh, bastion, so if I just remove this, you see there's just one layer of lava here, and now that lava is gone. Uh, so I just did that everywhere here, and in fact should probably do it for this next row here just to be safe. There we go. So yeah, pretty easy to just get rid of this lava since it's only two blocks deep. Uh, then all we got to do is just dig out underneath the spawner. So that's what I'm doing right now, just digging out the area. Then we're going to need to put a rail line uh, underneath this layer here, I think. Um, then a blank layer where there's just going to be frogs. And then just snow blocks on top of that. And that should be the entire thing. Then we just got to basically enclose it, make sure the magma cubes can't jump out. And we should be good to go. Minecart track is now in place, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, it'll pick up any items we throw onto the ground here. And then if we basically get out an empty shulker box, we'll place this down here. You'll see, as it picks up the items, just goes back and forth. And then it'll pick up the items on the level above it, which is where we're going to have the magma cubes fall onto. Then it comes up this track, stops right here, deposits its items in the shulker box, and then once it's done depositing those items, launches yet again down to pick up more items so that's perfect now we just need to put in the floor which i think is going to go on this level right here directly above this thing um so yeah let's go ahead and put that in and then we can put down the powdered snow all right guys so we got the floor down now with some quartz bricks and some shroom lights which is pretty nice and yeah now we're just building up the sides of the thing with some white stained glass and this is going to be what basically keeps the magma cubes in the uh, spawning area and yeah next step after this is just to place down some powdered snow so we're almost done with this farm believe it or not glass placement is now complete for the frog light farm ladies and gentlemen and looks like this uh, and also there is a guest on the bastion roof up there don't know if you guys are checking that out but that's kind of weird <laughs> to look at from below uh, anyways now we need our powdered snow uh, so the way we're gonna do this is we're just basically gonna go uh, every other block with this powdered snow and have it floating in the air so that the small uh, magma cubes can go under it but the medium and large magma cubes are going to be in it and of course if you're not wearing leather boots like I am you start to freeze and then ultimately start to take damage uh, in the nether uh, and the magma cubes also take damage and this is how we're going to reduce the all the slimes down to uh, small slimes uh, just like that so that's pretty nice, and so we'll just come over here, put this down here, and then just continue to repeat this process with other snow buckets like so. Um, and then, besides this, the only thing we have left to do is get the frogs in here, which is probably going to be the most time-consuming part of this whole thing. Um, so I'll finish placing this stuff down here, and then we're going to go and get some frogs from somewhere. You know what I'm also going to do before we bring the frogs in? Uh, I don't want the frogs to die when we get them to the bastion, and right now we just have this little, like, one block staircase down, which is not very safe, especially if you're bringing a mob that jumps around a lot down. Um, so, I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the blocks in this entire area here. Uh, we're going to first of all get rid of all the lava down here, um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll put um, some slime down here and make this entire bottom portion into slime so when we get the frogs to the top of the bastion we can just simply jump down and bounce along with the frogs uh, and then eventually get them into the farm 
So here we go. Bouncy Slime Bastion Castle has begun, because why the heck not? This will actually help a lot, I think, in getting all of our frogs down here safely. Uh, by the way, we're using a lot of the slime that Doc gave us. Oh, hello, Skeletor. Good, to, good of you to drop in. This is still a uh, Soul Sand Valley biome, so we can still get skeletons that spawn throughout the Bastion. Uh, but this is all from what Doc gave us early on in the season. Doc gifted us this after we did something for him. I'm not exactly sure what we did, but he was very appreciative and gave us all of this slime edge that we're placing down now. So, yeah, this is amazing. So this should be a lot of fun. Let's try it out from the top of the Bastion. You can see this rather janky staircase we built way back in the day when we first came to this Bastion. So definitely do not want to take the frogs down this. Easier just to jump down from the top. Uh, so if we get here, yeah, this is good enough spot as any, I think. In fact, we'll just take off these rails because we don't need them anymore. See some of the skeletons around as well. But slime down there now. Jump off and boing, boing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is fantastic. All right, so then we just sort of make our way over here and then into the farm. Okay, that'll work. Uh, we need a lead, and then we need to go find some frogs. You know what? This might actually be easier than I thought. Apparently, Joe Hills has already found some frogs and actually has some tadpoles for sale at his axolotl shop. So we might as well go over to Joe's shop and just buy the <laughs> frogs that we need. And then we can grow them up ourselves as needed. Uh, I believe Joe's shop is over here, which is kind of like off in the distance from the regular shopping district. It's actually kind of like in a kind of obscure location, like through here and then like down this way. <laughs> and then, yeah, there it is. Way, way, way down there. How's our lights are doing? We're, we're set. Very good. All right. So if we float on in here. Uh, welcome to Mixolotls. Now with tadpoles in the mix. Hey oh Joe Hill's proprietor, one diamond button per press. Oh, is it a is it a random thing? Oh no, are we gonna have to buy axolotls too? Hoppy days, frog suma, stress frogster, hermit the frog, I froggin, Thaddeus, Ren the frog, Ethos hopper frog. <laughs> There's a bunch of different things here. Okay, so I guess, uh, I guess we have to randomly purchase things here. So let's see how many diamonds we got left. Not too many. We got 23 diamonds left. So let's get a few out. And let's let's get. We'll do 10 button presses. Certainly in 10 we can get three different types of frogs, right? Certainly. Okay, here we go. Here's one. Oh, you get two. I don't know if that's intended. <laughs> uh, okay, there's two. Let's try this one. There's one. Two. Okay. Three. Four. Okay, how many we got? One, two, three, four. I'd like to have like six frogs. Five. There's one, two, three, four, five frogs. Six. I think that's all we need. Yep, that's all we need. So let's secure some of these. We did six button presses, so we'll take 40s back. There we go. I'm not exactly sure if that is intended. We ended up with way too many... <laughs> way too many axolotls. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put back all the axolotls here because I feel like somebody else might want them. I really just am looking for the frogs and I don't know if it's intentional or not. We got so many axolotls. But we got uh, seven... Seven frogs. I actually want six. I'm going to put back Mumbo Jumpo, I guess. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and, yeah, now we should be good to go, I think. Uh, so we got six in there. Yes. Okay. We got six frogs. Yes. Okay. And if it was intended that we get all those, I'll come back and, uh, yeah, get some axolotls or something. But, uh, yeah, with that, we are off. Got to go grow some frogs. So before we actually move these frogs to the frog light farm, we want to get a decent, like, breedable population of frogs going here. Uh, and so we want to have all types of frogs. We can get all types of frog lights. So at this point here, like right behind Gigapies, I think this is a good spot to do it because we can have one frog 
uh, type growing up here, and then another type growing up up there above us in the mountains. Uh, and so that'll get us the cold one and the temperate one. Uh, and then we just need the warm one. So let's go ahead and make a little structure here. I guess we'll use our shovel. Uh, or, yeah, I guess we'll use our shovel here. We'll dig out like a little like pond area. I think would be nice. So something like this. Like so. And then we need to have some like type of enclosure here for sure. I'm not sure how far these frogs can jump up, but hopefully not terribly far. <laughs> we'll see though. There we are. All right. Uh, and then we just need to put down the tadpoles. We're putting down Vintage Leaps and Frog Suma in here. There's a one. There's a two. All right. Uh, so now those guys will grow up in here. And yeah, should eventually become frogs, obviously. Uh, we should also probably put some torches in here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now... Uh, we go up to the mountains, and we do the same thing. Ren and Ito, sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. What do you know? There we go. They have been bred. Yep. Very good. Okay, so we got the green type here. So that's the green type being bred, the orange type being bred. Uh, now the only type we need is the warm, or the tropical frog, uh, the gray one. So let's bust out of here. Close that back in, and let's go see if we can find a good spot to breed these tropical frogs. So for the tropical frogs, we're out at total chaos. Looks like this. Pretty chaotic out here, to be honest. But uh, we have an area cleared here from when we were shearing pumpkins that I think will work nicely for the frogs. So we're going to make a little bit here. It's not too far away from the portal either. Uh, I think right here is just fine. Um, so we'll put down... Like a 4x4 four four of water. And make sure we actually have water first before we place down these tadpoles. There we go. Um, and yeah, we also got the advancement for catching a tadpole with a bucket. So we got that, which is nice. Um, so then we'll just do this here. There we go. And then make this... All water sources, very good. Okay, so the Hop It by J.R.R. Frogian. Frogian. And Gemini Toad. In it together. There we go. Alright, so then we'll do... I think we'll do like... Uh, one block around on each side. Trying to use native leaves, by the way. No reason. Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. We'll get this warm frog going. See how it, how it fares. Hey, there we go. Gemini Toad. Welcome, welcome. And we gotta grow up the, the, the hop it. There we go. So there we go. Frog spawn here. Gemini Toad, chillin'. Hop it, chillin'. And the worm frog is now ours. So that is fantastic. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait here, get a few more bred up. Just so I have a couple of them. And yeah, then we can uh, take one of them, uh, or two of them maybe even. Uh, into the nether. So we got a couple of these warm biome toads breeding up and so we're taking Gemini toad to the nether now and we got to try and get Gemini toad to the other toads <laughs> so we can take them all together to the uh, to the biome to the, to the bastion. So let's see if we can make this happen. See if the toad can go through the nether. There we go. Hopefully it's not suffocating the other side or something. But... We shall see. Yeah, there we go. Gemini Toad. All right, Gemini Toad. Let's go. We rolled out the red carpet for you. This is the pathway I made to Total Cast. Made this during a live stream the other day. But there we go. Speedy Toad through the nether. And we'll see if we can make it back. <laughs> so I don't think it's worthwhile taking Gemini Toad back to the overworld. So we're going to attach Gemini Toad to this pole here. We are at what marker in the hub here we're at marker three and now it's on the <laughs> it's on the, the the ender chest so we'll take this down oh and we don't want this person to fall out down here because they would probably die there we go okay we made it nope not quite okay we're safe 
Gemini Toad is safe here. There's no way out. There's no way they can fall. There's nothing that can spawn here. We'll leave Gemini Toad here because we're going to have to come down this way anyway to get to the, uh, what do you call it, to the, uh, the Bastion. So we'll go through. We'll get the other two Toads. We got our leads here. So, yeah, we'll go get the other two Toads and come right back. Okay, it looks like we have some tadpoles here growing up. So we're going to take... Vintage leaps to the overworld, or to the uh, the nether, I should say. Come on, vintage. There we go. Vintage leap, this little rascal. This is the one that tried to jump out on us. Uh, we're going to attach this here for now. And then we're going to go up the mountain to get the other one, which is this way. See if we got anybody growing up yet in here. Yes. Got a couple tadpoles there. Very good. Uh, we're missing Ren. Okay, no, we're not. We got Ren the Frog right here. We're good. We're good. Except, yeah, there. Okay, right here. There we go. We also got an advancement, apparently. <laughs> when a squad hops into town. Very nice. Very nice. All right, let's bust Ren out of here. Kind of surprised because we don't have all... Oh, we do have all the... Oh, it actually tracks. That's kind of crazy. So the game actually tracks... Uh, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, you sir will stay here, Etho, Etho, can you please, can you please not, Etho, typical Etho, am I right, guys, there we go, okay, so yeah, it actually keeps track of, apparently for the advancement, when you have, uh, just hooked a lead to a fence, it doesn't matter, you have them all at the same time, that's kind of cool, I didn't know that, actually, so we're gonna slowly make our way down here, Vintage Leaps, meet Ren the Frog. We're going to take both of these two hermit frogs over to our base area where we can get in the nether and then meet up with Gemini Toad in the tunnel. Moment of truth has arrived for Ren the Frog and Vintage Leaps. We're taking them through. We're taking them through. Come on through, boys. There we go. All right. Head on back through this way. Let's hope they don't get loose in this part of the nether because it's kind of chaotic and they can fall and die maybe all right let's get them in the tunnel here if we can we want to get them out this way there we go okay now we can speed speed run through the nether with them i think we're good here until we get to the tunnel very nice okay so far so good Make our way down here. Now we got some speed effect. Where is Gemini Toad? There, there is Gemini Toad. All right, so we're going to keep all three of these now. All three of the Toad types here. Gemini, Ren, and Vintage Leaps uh, right here. And we're going to basically make a three-wide tunnel off of this main tunnel to the Bastion. You know, I actually think connecting to this Bastion is going to be pretty easy because, yeah, someone extended the tunnel all the way down here. I believe it was Joe. But because of Joe's awesome work, uh, we actually are at 27 down the East Tunnel, and this is far enough to get us to the Bastion. So now we just need to basically cut in a three-wide path here all the way to the Bastion, and that should help us out greatly in transporting these frogs. All right, we got the whole crew here. Let's do this thing. Let's grab our leads. One, two, three. All right. And let's roll. Definitely missed a golden opportunity there to say, let's hop. My bad, guys. My bad. Whoop. That, oh, that was a little scary. Not gonna lie. What is this? Mining desert and mesa. Okay, there's a pathway there. Good to know. Good to know. Don't do it. Don't do it, bro. Told him not to do it. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. Alright, making our way into the Bastion now with the frogs. And I guess we're just gonna throw ourselves off here, pretty much. No, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna get him onto this side. Through this gap, I hope. Let's get him over here, and then we'll take him all through this one wide tunnel. We hope. Okay, okay, they're on top. Not exactly ideal. 
But once we get here, we gotta jump off this side, and we should be good. So they're all out. Let's do it. Jump. There they go. Come on, frogs. Oh, the other the other frogs didn't jump. They didn't jump. We only got one down here. Hang on, hang on. You, you come on this way. I'm afraid I'm gonna see another frog <laughs> jump and then die instantly down here. Uh, do we have? Let's see. I might have some fences we can tie these guys to real quick. Yeah, right here. You stay right there, my dude. All right, there's that guy. <laughs> Let's see if we can go and get the other couple that are still up here. Oh, yeah, there they are. Yep, they're here. They're here. Let's quickly not die. Okay. Let's see. All right. You guy, you go. Ren, sayonara, my friend. Thank you, skeleton, for your service. Appreciate it. And then who else we got? Who else we got up here? We got... Gemini Toad, of course. Where are you going? Come on back. Come on back. Alright, we want this toad. Okay, Gemini toad, off you go. There we go. See ya. There we go. Alright. Perfect. And now we got some skeletons to deal with here. Good try. Good try, skeletons. But you failed. Alright, we made it. We made it. All the toads got down here. <laughs> They're bouncing. They're jumping. Alright, there we go. Let's just bounce over this way. Move them down here. Okay. Very good. All toads secured. Very, very good. Ren, Vintage, and Gem. Fantastic. Let's put these guys in. Let's get some glass out. Uh, let's... I think we should probably, we'll probably move these guys in first, then remove the blocks. Probably be the best way to do it, I think. Uh, so we'll just get this taken out. There we go. Okay. Move them all in. Right through here. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do, do, do. There we go. Get them all in there. Just like so. Very nice. Okay. That's great. Alright, now we take out the blocks on the top. So let's just quickly get up here. Take some of these out. Just quickly take out the one on top. That's the easiest one to take out by far. And this should now start to work, I think. So we'll just do this. We'll come on the side here a little bit, like so. Get rid of this block in there. There we are. Okay, last block being taken out. There we go. Alright, farm is fully operational now. There we have it. And let's see, we got some magma cubes down there, or some uh, magma balls down there as well. Which is going to be good for our fire resistance potions uh, in our potion shop. Um, so that's good. And yeah, we see some frog lights. That's good. We should see. Oh yeah, some frog lights coming in. There's some of the blocks we broke as well. But yeah, let's just give this a second. See if the cart makes its way over. There we go. It's dumping stuff off. It's happening. It's happening. There's one. There's two. There's three frog lights. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, we did it! The frog light is complete! Hooray! Woo! Let's go! Alright, we got the blocks, baby. Yeah, let's go! Alright, so, Verdant, Ochre, and the Pearlescent frog light right there in a line. Very nice! This is fantastically amazing, guys. You can see the big magma cube over there shivering before it dies. And these other magma cubes, these medium-sized ones, they're just big enough to where they die, but the small ones don't. And the frogs will eat those up really quickly. You can see. Nom, 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 nom. Look at him. Here he goes. Ready? Bam! Eating, eating, eating. Oh, man, this guy's on a rampage. Jesus. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> 
So there you go, guys. The frog light farm is now complete. Stuff is rolling in. We almost got a stack of each now after just a minute or two. Um, but yeah, that is great. Really like the slime drop into here, too. And we'll continue to, like, build this up and make this uh, look cool over the next few days and weeks but just wanted to get this thing up and out now that we're updated to 119 so i want to say a big thank you to everyone out there for watching if you enjoyed today's video please leave a like be sure to subscribe and as always thank you so much for watching this has been cub goodbye